Okay, so we have talked about the radius, sine function, cosine function, tangent function, as well as the angle. Beautiful. Now we can actually um, talk about the arc length. So the arc length is going to be basically something like this. So let me try to draw a straight line across like so. And something like so. Okay. So let's just say we start right here. We have ourselves a point. And at this particular point, we have some arc length. This is going to be S sub zero. Of course, this is just R times theta in radians. And since theta in radians happens to be zero radians, that means that our arc length at that point is just going to be zero. So yeah, you just do it like that. That's real quick, real, real good. But if you want to know, well, actually, I may have said that a little bit wrong, but the, the calculation of the arc length at this instantaneous point is that. And then you have some calculation at this point, and this is going to be R times theta. I should say theta final. I should say theta initial here. Because there are two different thetas. And so you'll see that you can get some kind of arc length here. So now you'll see that the arc length, and I rather call it arc displacement, is just going to be SF minus S initial. So let's just refer to this as the arc. displacement. Now know that displacement speaks of vectors and vectors are things that have magnitude and direction. Okay. Alrighty. So the direction in this particular case is this way. Now it's going to be only very small displacements. You know, that's that's going to be pretty much the idea. It's going to be for very, very small um, uh, arc lengths. Okay. And I think, I want to say that that's it. So we have S delta, delta S here, going from one location to the other location. Now, if we want to define arc length, we would just leave that little thing off on the top off and we would just have SF minus S naught. That's what you're going to see most of the time, especially when you get into the curve. Mm, and I think that that is pretty much it. Now there is a connection between the arc length and the sine function and I do want to make that real quick. So remember that the sine function is equal to y divided by r, which implies that y is just equal to r sine theta. Now, s, or the arc sine, arc length is equal to s is equal to r times theta. Now, I just want to make a point here that y is equal to s when, well, let me not say equal as, as a little too far, is approximately S when theta is much smaller than 1. When I say theta is much smaller than 1, that's basically 0 0.001, all right, radians. And it only works for radians. So I'm going to give you guys a quick example of that. Mm -hmm. 
So, if we have r is equal to 1, that means that the sign, well, that means that y is equal to 1 times the sign of 0 0.001 radians. So, let's go ahead and pop that up rid of this so we'll have 1 times sine of 0 0.001 radians so you see how we're getting this point zero 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 nine 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 I'm gonna go with that so that lets you know that y is equal to 0 <laughs> y is equal to 0 0.000999, which is approximately 0 0.001. Okay, and let's go ahead and do the same thing for s. So, or the arc length, s is equal to r times theta, and in this particular case, we just have 1 times 0 0.001, which is just 0 0.001. And it should be in meters, or, you know, we're going to use meters all throughout, so I'm just going to say meters here, because we're de dealing with lengths. So what does that mean right here? So the sine y is here. S is here. Ooh. S is the blue curve. So we're saying that Y is approximately equal to S or delta S to be more specific. So the only time this really happens is when this angle is like super small. Well, I don't like that color. Let's try green. When it's really small, when it's really small, this green line looks like the blue line. That's all we're saying. So the arc length works for very small lengths. And that is it.